we are all early in that curve of awakening by choice. Uh, this is the wild, wild west, and it's really, really cool. That's really uh, so fun, cool. We're it? hypnotized, yeah. Yeah. but boy, where we're going, Hale, as you know, I mean, there's just never going to be words to describe the bliss, and I don't think it's far away. It's like it's like a breath away. Welcome to Letting Go and the Greatest Secret where we explore the end of suffering and the beginning of lasting happiness. I'm Hale Dwoskin, and today we'll be meeting with Mike Dooley, who is a featured teacher along with me in Rhonda Byrne's book and movie, The Secret. Mike is also a New York Times bestselling author with 17 books. He's presented worldwide on life, dreams, and happiness. And over 900,000 people receive his daily email called Notes from the universe. Let's just start out. How do you see the secret and the greatest secret supporting each other, complementing each other, uh, ha compared to each other? How would you describe that? Well, I think the secret, um, as fabulous as it was and is, um, is just the beginning. And in, yes. and for the whatever 92 minutes of its existence, I mean, I don't think it could possibly be any better than it is. But there wasn't the opportunity to put legs under the table. Right. And I think moving towards the greatest secret, now we are addressing the divine. God or infinite awareness, as Rhonda calls it. Now we are understanding that time, space, and matter are illusions. Now we're understanding that all is supremely well. Now we're understanding that being of God, by God, pure God, we had to choose to come here. And however muddy it gets, it was from the zenith of our brilliance and majesty that we made the choice to dive down here. And so we can at least know we knew what we were doing and we wouldn't have come here uh, if it wouldn't be inside the heart of God, Hale, if you want to put it that way. I know Rhonda says it's happening inside of divine awareness or infinite awareness. I totally agree. This book just lit me up because it's all about what I've been eating, sleeping and breathing lately. And if you will permit me to ramble a little and, and I'll oh, to, ramble, ramble oh, on. Sure. <laughs> there's, there's a distinction, I think, between awareness uh, and waking up, you know, the awakening of the planet, the age of Aquarius versus total full on enlightenment, self-realization. Um, waking up, you start realizing you're a spiritual being. Waking up, you understand um, that there's way more going on than the physical senses could even show you. It's like microscopic compared to reality, so to speak. Um, awakening, you finally start getting traction and it's enough to live a rocking, joyful life. I mean, that's it. We don't, we don't have to figure it all out. We just need to kind of get the truth. And by awakening and understanding that our thoughts become things uh, and that there is this secret, a law of attraction, anybody can have, do, or be anything else. But Rhonda is so on point, uh, and as are you. Congratulations, by the way. The book is absolutely fabulous. Um, Thank you. That that there is further to go, and and that that further distance um, eclipses by a, a million billion miles <laughs> the joy that the secret can bring. And, and as all the Eastern schools speak of. Uh, what awaits us when we finally blend with total truth is an unimaginable ecstasy, constant, not an emotional joy, an emotional joy. All emotions you know, are pivoting off of our perspectives, our beliefs, um, you know, where we are at any given point in the sea of circumstances. But an ecstasy, well, I, I'm not there quite, quite yet, even though I'm in the heart of God right now, we all are, I'm still partaking of the original forbidden fruit. Um, and so <laughs> ecstasy is the new carrot on the end of a stick that leads me forward every day in the work I do. I'm still a teacher of truth. Uh, I'm, I'm waking up and helping other people wake up. But I now know, as much as I know the sky is blue, 
that uh, that ecstasy awaits all of us in the arc of our conscious evolution and we are all early in that curve of awakening by choice uh, this is the wild wild west and it's really really cool that's really uh, so fun, cool we're it? hypnotized yeah. Yeah. but boy where we're going hell as you know i mean there's just never going to be words to describe the bliss and i don't think it's far away it's like it's like a breath away but yes. the, you know the trick is getting there and with the prevailing vibration on the planet rising at breakneck speeds chronicled um, by all of the ancient holy books, uh, including the Mayans and the, the 2012. I mean, the, amazing how they could tune into this, but they were tuned into truth millennia ago and they hit, hit it right on the button. This is the time that we're moving from the darkness into the light. So what a right. cool time to be alive this is, Hale. It's really cool. And uh, people, people sometimes get confused because they think, well, two things about what you said. First off, I think people sometimes get confused between having that amazing initial glimpse of truth and they make that into something really special and important, whereas they don't realize that's what's natural. And we're the more we can let that be natural in our everyday experience, the more we're building a foundation, so to speak. It doesn't really need a foundation, but the more it opens up more and more into our consciousness. And, and because it is our basic nature, this that we, that we start to taste, it naturally expands upon itself. Actually, that's not correct. It, it doesn't expand, but our awareness of it expands upon itself as long yeah. as we don't get in the way. So that's one thing I wanted to say in, in relationship. Would you agree with that? Oh, totally agree. And I find it almost torturous to realize that what you just described is our natural state and that literally we go unnatural at the at the strike of dawn every single day when we get out of bed just and I'm a like, little breath stop it stop <laughs> doing that to yourself don't bite into these illusions as if they're reality you know stay on the other side but i don't think of it as a fall from grace i, I don't like that biblical characterization it's like it's all bad I, I kind of think and i wonder what you think that this is kind of part of the terrain and would have been anticipated by divine intelligence that you know okay there's going to there's going to be this immersion of the divine inside of the creation of the divine that's going to be so captivating um that for we will momentarily forget who we really are before we regain and then have eternity and so right now we're in that little kind of tiny little bubble it seems like eternity even if it's 10 million years it's it, it's it's nothing um, but here we are in that tiny little bubble and, and as pioneers of consciousness into this new realm of the jungles of time and space, these benevolent sacred jungles of time and space, uh, so that legions behind us can come and, and, and enjoy it the way we will ultimately enjoy it. I think it's yes. intoxicating. And back to your question, yeah, it's our natural state. And I, I personally am not aware of anybody uh, who's been there, but it's not really for me to judge. I do agree that many folks um, sharing awesome mystical experiences of which I have had a tiny few um, may, may not realize that there's so much more. Uh, it wasn't just they had a gift that gave them a new idea. It's like pure ecstasy awaits all. All right, right. But you know, in, in my experience, there's a little bit of a believing that it has to be ecstatic in order for it to be true is a place that I see people get stuck. Because if you look what I've seen, and, and again, I, I'm not trying to correct you, I'm just saying this has been my experience, that when, uh, as you recognize that which you truly are, it is so natural that you start to see that uh, when you have a taste, one of the mistakes we make is we try to get back to that taste. But if you look in this moment to see what's the same in this moment as, as then, mm -hmm. you start to see that that background is still 
that background is aware, that background is already whole, complete, and enough, and motionless, boundless, timeless, spaceless. And it opens to you more and more the more you recognize its naturalness and you pay attention. And because it, you don't have to go anywhere to get this because you That's already right. are this. And I, I like to remind people of that because otherwise they think, well, I'm not experiencing ecstasy this moment. I must not be there, but it's not a there, it's a here. And it's natural the the, the body I think would fry. Uh, and again, I've heard that from Eastern teachers that the ecstasy part of this is not maintainable. It would actually fry your nervous system. Whereas that, unshakable inner certainty, peace, happiness, uh, alive, alive awakeness, that can be here 24 seven, even when you're asleep. Yeah, no, I think you're, I totally agree with you. And I know what you're saying. And I am, I am definitely not talking about like a human joy, which right. so it's hard to, to differentiate. Um, it's like, divine love it's just like on all the time and i'm yes. sure we could not handle um total ecstasy the way i was describing it all the time but yet there would be this subtle ecstasy and i yes I read well that that's been my experience there's this subtle even when there's crisis going on around you and this is something that everyone listening to this can can have right now this is something oh, yes that's what you should be looking forward to is is being able to have a, a, a things not go your way and you're still unshakably happy, especially right now. That's very important. There's plenty oh, of yeah. things not going our way uh, planetarily. But at the same time, if, if you can bring that happiness, that joy, that peace that you are to every situation, it transforms the way you live life. Would you agree with that? Oh my gosh, it's, it's everything. It's living within and, and not being buffeted about by circumstances which are so fleeting and so ephemeral. Um, and I think we all have an idea of what it would be like to meet Jesus or Buddha. Oh, and, yeah, and they are exactly a, that's a total, what That's a totally other level. <laughs> all right. Well, but they would be this state of serene, in the moment, acceptance, uh, I would still say a subtle bliss, but it wouldn't show up like, oh boy, am I happy today. Right, I right. read something um, in the Bible, and I'm not a Bible reader. I'm not religious in any way, shape, or form. I think spirituality is a different thing than religion, but there was a passage in the Bible. I think I read this in Autobiography of a Yogi, which you must certainly be familiar with. Oh, very. It was one of the that, first spiritual books I ever read. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I only read it at 13 months ago, and that's what lit me oh, up. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, I, it lit me up at, as a teenager. <laughs> so there's this part, as they're talking about enlightenment, self-realization. And, and as you know, the book references the Bible a lot, but within a slightly different take on... The, the underlying meaning, which is so profoundly more useful than our right. typical mainstream interpretation of the, the Bible. Uh, and apparently, you know, the, the, this is unprepared, so I don't want to butcher it too much, but Jesus and some disciples were working, walking towards a city. And there was a bunch of, you know, you know, really crazed fans like hallelujah praise the lord jesus is walking amongst us and some of his disciples were really put off by this overt display of enthusiasm and they were like you know jesus you know shouldn't you shouldn't you temper them shouldn't you tone them down and jesus said something to the effect and this is biblical scripture said if i were to tone them down then even the rocks beneath their feet would sing out in praise and this is a this was saying this, this ecstasy, which is so not the right word, but there is no word that's going to come close to it. It's certainly not an emotion. This vibration of just like of bliss, of serenity, of just I, I, w exists in every vibrating atom, every rock, every table, every computer, every moth, every ant, every cell in your body, my body, a listener's body right now 
is vibrating a supreme bliss. That's our natural, natural state. And it's, it's not joy. It's not jump up and down. I'm so excited to be alive. It's just this like total acceptance, total awareness of love, only love, not a conditional love, and that all could not possibly be better. I mean, it does boggle my mind. I know there's, I don't want to argue for limitations, but I feel like there's places a brain uh, can't go, like, you know, the, the origins of God, or how does divine mind process awareness, because we know it's pure awareness, because we process it on a linear timeline. So one thought leads to another thought. When there's no linear timeline, and it's all, how? How? I don't know how. And and this, <laughs> this is the same with the concept and truth of ecstasy and bliss, uh, born of true enlightenment, born of an immersion in truth and no false anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what are your thoughts on like the origin of the origin of the origin uh, or trying to put into words some of these concepts? Isn't it? It's a fun little challenge. It is a fun challenge. But, you know, what I to me, the challenge is and what I've been exploring since since my teenage years, but certainly since I started doing the Sedona method in, in my early 20s, is that the thing I like to explore, there's two things I like to explore. One is, what am I really that's the most simple, the most natural, the most pure, and that's the same in all? And, and just like you said, in all in all creation, but also in all human beings, there's something we all share that we don't usually pay attention to. And in, in Rhonda's book, they, he, she describes it as awareness. And uh, you, without that awareness that we are, there is no experiencing, none. It, it's, it's the root of all experiencing, it's the root of all, whether we would label it as positive or negative, it doesn't matter. And the, 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 the side effect is just this unqualified happiness, this unqualified love, this unqualified peace, this unqualified acceptance. And, and the other thing I have been exploring uh, all this time is that the only reason that we don't experience it continuously is we get distracted by our thoughts, our feelings, our beliefs, our tendencies, our, our ideas, our memories, all the stuff that we, the mind throws, throws up into awareness that we've habituated into studying that as opposed to studying what's actually here. And so it's been fascinating to give people ways to let go of that excess baggage and help them also join me in becoming more aware of that which they truly are. Yeah. So it, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's really a lot of fun. And, and it sounds like you've been doing a similar thing. Oh, yeah. I, I've, I've been aware of the, the legs that needed to be put under the table. Uh, and not, not in reference to the secret, but just to paint as full a picture and as convincing a picture to my readers or my audiences um, as possible. And so I've got some meditations, I've got some guided visualizations, I've got things like that as well, because because you said it, you know, we're, we're hypnotized, we're distracted, um, that pulls us out of truth. We believe things that aren't true. We think circumstances or life are happening to us, not realizing we're happening to, to life. Right, right. Uh, we came first. And, um, and so, boom, Bob's your uncle. And, you know, we've got lions and tigers and bears. Right. <laughs> I love, you're so enthusiastic. And I love the way you express things. It's, it's very creative. Very creative. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, um, you, uh, do you have an exploration that we can do and share with uh, the people listening? Yeah, I do, I do. Okay, um, so before we before we do that, uh, we're gonna take a quick break uh, and then we'll come back and we'll do this exploration. Mm -hmm. 
If you haven't yet gotten Rhonda Byrne's new book, The Greatest Secret, I highly recommend it. Plus, if you're interested in more information about me or my mentor, Lester Levinson, or the Sedona Method, please visit Sedona.com. So welcome back, everyone. And uh, let's enjoy the process we're about to be taking through. I can't wait. Sure, sure. This is going to be fun for me, too. I call this being inside of the moment. So I'd like to, to ask those listening right now to just relax, a couple of deep breaths, take it easy, in and out. And then with your eyes open, uh, I'm assuming you have vision, if not, whatever faculty suits you the best, I want you to absorb and take in your surroundings. I want you to notice colors, colors out the window, colors on the wall. Uh, I want you to notice objects on your desk, on the floor, textures, vibrancy. Do you have plants near you? Just soak in visually absolutely everything that's around you. Go ahead and do that. Okay, now then I want you to close your eyes, please. And I want you to smell. I want you to take long, slow breaths and think about what's there. Now, if you're in a room you've been in a lot, you're desensitized. But if I were to show up, I'd smell something. What's there? I want you to smell it like you've never smelt it before. Take in any and all aromas, coffee, dust, paint, pets. Go ahead. And now listen. Do you hear the hum of your computer? Do you hear your family, coworkers? the wind or birds outside, your chair squeaking, go ahead and listen. And now I want you to feel, feel from your toes to your nose above and in between. What's there? Relax. Relax your muscles, all of them. Just feel them easing up, loosening up. Can you feel the clothes on your back, your pants, your shoes? Any other physical sensations, just for a moment, feel. Okay, now I want you to simply be, just be. You can open your eyes, you can close your eyes. Don't worry if there's noise or distractions, that's part of what's going on right now. I want you to be where you are now. Be here now. You've got no assignments. There's nothing you're supposed to do. Things aren't supposed to be quiet. They aren't supposed to be noisy. They are what they are. Be in this moment, this precious, fleeting, eternal moment. Can you feel it literally? Can you feel the moment? Total stillness, quiet your mind. Let there be a blending of your awareness with divine awareness. You're everywhere. You're always at once. Hear it all. Feel it all. See it all. Be it all. 
the delicious world around you. It's holding you safe and secure. This is where your power is. Your power is in the present moment. Be there, feel it, pulsing, calm, easy. We have brought our awareness from observation, everything around us, to an inner stillness. This inner stillness is always there. It's who you really are. Pure awareness. Totally divine. Go here in times of trouble. Return to this place. Begin by absorbing your environment and then stilling your thoughts into this present precious moment. It's always there. You're always loved. It's always easy. You saw how we did it together. Okay, you can come to gently. Open your eyes. And with a little bit of a practice, a little bit of experience, I have found that if I just will it, just intention, and it doesn't matter if there's noise or distractions, if I just like, okay, here now, be here now. Your eyes can be open. They can be closed. Suddenly there's just the serenity that was there all along. My goal is to be in that moment 24 seven. Right now what I do uh, is six, 12, 18 times a day, just for 15, 30 seconds. That was the long version that we just did. You don't need the right chair. You don't need darkness. You don't need nothing. There could even be music playing in the background. And it's a really great way to kind of set up a creative visualization exercise. Just first cleanse. It's like just cleanse of the circumstances, cleanse of, of the, the, the power the distractions had over you and put yourself in the center of it all. Be here now. It is truly the place our power exists. And as Rhonda so nailed it in her book, The Greatest Secret, it's, it's, it's where eternity lies your power, your divinity. Uh, as Rhonda put it, that we are awareness and everyone is the same awareness. Uh, a similar way of looking at this um, is to realize that everyone is pure God. God is pouring through us the same quality and dispensation, if you will. And we, with our personalities and our baggage and our gifts and our blessings, we become lenses, like a prism, if you will. And no two are quite the same. It's all pure God pouring through you, Hale, and pouring through me and pouring through absolutely everyone. The exact same stuff, but it shows up differently based on the lens that, that is the product of our distance from truth, uh, limiting beliefs, uh, conflicting thoughts, desires. You know, I want to go here. I want to go there. You can't do both. But if I don't acknowledge and realize that I'm in conflict, it pulls me out of that moment and distracts me, as you so well put, from God. And, and I I've just love this idea that it's the same quality, the same there isn't a personality. The personality, our personalities are a function of our junction, the junction of <laughs> thoughts, beliefs, confusion. If we just get to awareness, which is just pure truth, which is just pure divinity, we are brothers and sisters. I mean, in we are the same. You are me and I am you, and we're just showing up in different ways. That, that kind of boggles my mind. Um, it makes me much less judgmental of other people. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, hard to uh, judge it really, when you it see yourself in them, yeah. Yeah, so I wanted to share that. Um, the, this, this adventure into our true nature 
as you put it. It's like, yes. uh, and, and not partaking of the forbidden fruit. Another topic I love to riff on is that, you know, uh, Adam and Eve, this metaphorical story, clearly, come on, it's a metaphorical story, um, representing, you know, God's immersion for the first time, if you will, now it's on a timeline, um, as a man and a woman. And everything is a thought form. You know, this is all a holographic image. This is happening in the mind of God. And the, the first appearance, uh, metaphorically embodied in Adam and Eve, uh, are um, two people who are in the Garden of Eden because they know the truth. Um, but it's so captivating and it's so distracting. And that apple is so red and the aroma, nothing like it in eternity. Um, I, I bet you. I bet you if you bit into that thing, fireworks, man, crazy fireworks. What a <laughs> bum bogus rap that Eve is supposedly the one who tempted the man. That's a bunch of crap. Uh, it's just two, two divine beings in the Garden of Eden um, and, and temptation. Oh, call it the snake, call it whatever, but just don't call it a woman. That's not fair at all. Um, they, they, they got curious. And so taking what is truly known to them to be, a holographic, fake, illusionary mind projection of an apple and biting into it, Puh, the tipping point was reached. They fell head over heels into like, this is amazing. And now there's a banana and now there's a pineapple and like, oh my God, it's all here for us. And, and that signified the tipping point of like being fully enlightened and, and kind of cr forgetting that it's a thought form to the degree that you would actually bite into it to enjoy the juice, the flavor, perhaps for nourishment. And then from that point forward, we have been reacting to the, the world and the illusions around us as if, as if we were secondary, completely forgetting what they forgot when they bit into it, that, that they are primal cause. We are primal cause. We are, the, the universe is just an extension of who we are. Um, as I wrote in a note from the universe once, there's, you know, really only you, and then there is more you. It's all <laughs> you. Right. And I think that kind of encapsulates the odyssey and the journey and the beautiful adventure we're now on, not a fall from grace. It's all good. It's all happening inside of God's mind, inside of God's heart. So, but, so, but getting back on track, like, you know, sometimes I even wonder, it's so good. You know, we came from that place of all knowing. We, we don't even need to go back because there's a part of us that's still there. And it is so darn cool to be inside these illusions and to maneuver with a logical mind because it can be done. We're doing a damn good job of it. We're really successful as a creature um, and we get better every single year and there's still love everywhere and we can find joy without being on the other side. Uh, I sometimes playfully like, you know, don't stress by any means, you know, your enlightenment because in a way you're already there. You're already in the Garden of Eden and if you're enjoying it, you know, go to go and collect $200, you win. You totally win. There's a part of you on the other side. It's like, you know, tracking everything. All right. right. He's waking up. Yeah. He's on the ball. Yeah. That's great. That's a great analogy. Love it. Love it. <laughs> yeah, it's all there. And it's been talked about through all recorded history. You know, there's been so many minds that have spoken to this. And now so many channeled minds that have spoken to this. Um, it, it's, it's exciting. There, there's it is. We live in a very exciting time. Very and exciting. there's nothing more terrifying, as Rhonda um, alluded to in The Greatest Secret, um, than, than not knowing this stuff. I mean, even awakening prior to enlightenment uh, starts kind of reassuring the individual who no longer believes in an angry God who's taking judgment on people. Um, there's nothing more terrifying than being out of truth or being in ignorance and thinking that God's angry, people are jerks, life's a test. Oh my God, I don't know how people who aren't waking up can cope with life. Right, right. You right. know, it's like, it's terrifying. It's, 
it's a jungle in a bad way out right. there instead of just a utopian heavenly paradise because it is that for all of us who just you know stop and pause and go oh my god right 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 <laughs> actually that's 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 probably a good place to to leave people with oh my god <laughs> oh my god wow that that is it is it does I, I'm sure that's the sentiment as the veils are lifted, like, oh, oh, oh shiver me timbers. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, so beautiful. Just in case, does, is there anything else you wanted to add before we bring it to a close? One thought that I, I, I've always gravitated towards, and I think I, maybe I have spoke to a little bit uh, in this time with you, Hale, and that is, Again, you said it, our natural state is the serene bliss. Uh, maybe call it ecstasy, maybe call it something else. The only difference in being in that state or not is boils down to something is being misunderstood. Always, there's some aberration of truth. Something is being missed. And that trickles down into every facet of our lives. And so, so, you know, I tell audiences, you know, ultimately, one day, there will be only the serene ecstasy in your being. Um, and until then, hallelujah, and thank you, Jesus, I mean that kind of playfully, um, for every freaking lion, tiger and bear in our lives. Because without challenges, the universe once wrote, how else would we know we were missing something? Huh, yes. You know, and, and if you're missing something and you're a true life adventurer, good goodness gracious, you want to know what that thing is. Oh, I mean, yes. it's nice to be ignorant and bliss, but that's never permanent. Right. You know, you're going down. Right. And so <laughs> if you realize that every little hiccup, um, setback, you know, and too often people judge uh, experiences to be a setback but but every every time you feel an unpleasant emotion it's because you're missing something and there's another way that you could be looking at it and with more truth the pain and the discomfort will go away and you will ascend to your rightful place on the throne knowing who you really are where you really are uh, and that all is supremely well and so i think our journey here in the these sacred jungles of time and space is a journey from truth through truth to truth <laughs> where we where we had it all and we voluntarily let it go just to see what would happen and see where we'd go safely in the palm of god's hand although we wouldn't know it to to gently and um carefully and playfully put the pieces of the puzzle back together and even before the puzzle gets put back together, there's infinite room for joy and happiness and deliberate manifestations using the law of attraction and all those other things. It's like, wow, wow. I constantly think, and this is like, you know, uh, not impressive, but I constantly just in, in awe of the mind boggling scope of the nature of the physical universe. Uh, and there's, and I know nothing of the physical universe only other than what my physical senses tell me, but the physical senses tell me that there's a hundred million species on planet earth. The physical senses tell me that there's this physical universe of a hundred billion stars. The, the, our scientists speculate that there are more physical universes, alternate realities, dimensions where neither time, space exists, and yet it all plays together. It's all this one symphony. It's all this unending magnificence. Even the physical laws uh, and properties and behaviors, whether it's of a quirk or of a cardinal and your bird feeder in the backyard, or it's just how could divine mind have ever grasped? How could it be so vast? How could it be so spectacular? How could it be, period? And yet here we are. <laughs> right. Here we are. And it's like such a gift. And it's so amazing. And it's so exciting. And it's eternal. <laughs> and it's forever. And we don't have to do anything other than just be like, 
there, be here now to taste and drink from this, this fountain of youth and beauty. And it's just so, so beautiful and so wonderful. And there's this like only good and there's nothing bad. And the good just scratches the surface. There's so much more. It's like, <laughs> that's something to think about during your next visualization, next meditation. Uh, yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Well, I thank you so much, Hale, for this opportunity. It's been an honor. You're a legend. Uh, my hat's off to you. Um, <laughs> and uh, keep on shining your light and helping all of us with your piercing insights and your love. It's, it's really remarkable. I hope you enjoyed our time with Mike Dooley as much as I did. You can learn more about Mike and his programs in the program notes or by going to his website, tut.com. That's T-U-T dot com. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe, give us a five-star rating, and share it with the people you care about. These episodes are dedicated to sharing the eternal teachings from the greatest secret. If you'd like to learn more about my work, my mentor Lester Levinson's work, and the Sedona Method, please visit Sedona.com. As you explore our site, you will learn the key to lasting happiness, success, peace, and emotional well-being. We have books, courses, events, and plenty of free material to explore. Again, go to Sedona.com. That's S-E-D-O-N-A.com. Thank you for being here, and we'll catch you in the next episode of Letting Go and the Greatest Secrets.